With us in New York, Bernard Whitman. He's a Democratic strategist and president and CEO of Whitman Insight Strategies. But let's start with our senior Washington correspondent, Dan Raviv. Dan, big meeting, an important one today between Nancy Pelosi and her caucus. What do you think is going to happen there? And can we expect some sort of call to begin an impeachment process tomorrow? Here in Washington, yeah, Nurit, we're really waiting for the outcome of a 4 p.m. get-together behind closed doors of all the Democrats in the House of Representatives, 235 men and women, to discuss whether they want to start a formal process of impeaching the President of the United States. The Democrats do have the majority in the House. They probably could do it, but their leader, the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, she's been warning them for months not to do it. She thinks that the voters of America won't appreciate a long impeachment process. It would be very divisive to the nation and a loser for Democrats because in the end, even if the president's impeached, the Senate would not vote to remove him from office. Uh, the Republicans control the Senate. However, in that meeting, Pelosi apparently was willing to listen, is moving closer to approving the start of impeachment hearings, but has a new idea, according to CNN and others. She says Wednesday, tomorrow, maybe the House will vote on some sort of resolution condemning President Trump and his administration for how they handled this whole topic of the contact with the Ukraine president, what apparently was said, uh, possibly pushing Ukraine to investigate the Bidens. A House resolution on that, but still not impeachment? Uh, quite a few Democrats in the House caucus would be disappointed. Nareet? Bernard, there have been multiple times over the last couple of years where something happens, then you hear that word, uh, the I word, come up amongst Democrats. This time it definitely is uh, louder. It is becoming more mainstream. Do you think this time really is different? I do. I think, it, I think it's time, and I come to that conclusion very reluctantly. I have been, uh, one, uh, agreeing with Nancy Pelosi to go slow on this, but it is such a gross abuse of power, such a gross abuse of trust, such an absolute shredding of the Constitution and the faith that voters place in the president that I don't think we have any uh, option but to move forward with impeachment. We have um, multiple counts of obstruction of justice, obviously over the Russian interference, uh, over payments to Stormy Daniels, the porn star, which is an election of uh, a campaign finance law uh, abuse, but relatively speaking, threatening to withhold aid and actually withholding aid from a foreign government to uh, try to get them to investigate a political opponent is such an egregious abuse of power that I think the Democrats have the moral and political and professional responsibility to move forward formally with impeachment. Bernard, if that's the case, then why have so many Democrats also held back from saying we should take that step, including the speaker herself? Well, I mean, as someone who lived through and leveraged uh, the Republicans' attempt to successful attempt to impeach President Clinton, who obviously did not, uh, was not removed from office by the Senate, I was very gun-shy about it as well. I think it is divisive, as your report suggested. Uh, people are split on impeachment, narrowly opposed right now. What I think what we have to look to is not only the political aspect of this, but history. How will history judge us if we let a president wantonly abuse power, essentially say, I'm going to continue breaking the law, I'm going to continue abusing power, I'm going to continue stonewalling, I'm not going to respect the Constitution, I'm not going to respect the powers of the office. I think we have to change the situation. And I think also, we, we as Democrats have yet to really come out with a clear narrative on why the president should be impeached. Obviously, the Senate is unlikely to remove him from office, but as we gear up for 2020, the entire Democratic message has to be, we must remove Trump from office and give a far better alternative to the American people. Dan, before impeachment even really enters the conversation, there's the question of what is actually at the heart of this particular incident. And the administration is still withholding that inspector general's report, what the whistleblower said, what exactly happened in those calls with the Ukrainian president. Is there something that Congress and that, I guess, Democrats in particular can do now to obtain it? Well, they point to a law. They say that under the law, if a whistleblower inside the intelligence community files a complaint and then the inspector general deems that it is serious and urgent and credible, then it should be given to the relevant committees of the Senate and the House. And so the Trump administration did not hand it over to Congress. Uh, you can threaten to impeach. You can again pass uh, motions to censure the president or anyone in the administration, but that doesn't lock anybody up and it doesn't even force them to actually hand over the 
transcript of the phone call in July between President Trump and the president of Ukraine. And it doesn't force the administration to hand over the whistleblower's complaint. And yet President Trump in New York has been predicting that you will get to read my conversation. I may not release it, but when you read it, you'll see I did nothing wrong. A lot of Democrats are saying, oh, well, then hand it over. Hearings on this are scheduled Thursday, by the way, in the House Intelligence Committee, Nareed. Bernard, I just want to get your quick take as a Democratic strategist. When you see uh, today's Democratic Party and in Congress with what is maybe a much bigger ideological divide between progressive Democrats and sort of more establishment mainstream Democrats, what do you think about the state of the party and in particular how they're dealing with issues like this? Well, I think, you know, heretofore there has been a huge split, and I think there will continue to be a battle all through the primary season as to whether we, how far left we want to go, how progressive do we want to get. But I think we can be united in respect for the office of the presidency. And I think there's no better example of that than the fact that seven swing state Democrats, uh, these are uh, freshman congressmen who won in districts that President Trump won, seven of them, all with national security backgrounds, wrote an op-ed together calling for impeachment. Uh, particularly given this whistleblower obstruction uh, of the, the your reporter just talked about. If we cannot have the president follow laws that were passed by Congress and dutifully signed by the president of the United States, then we're, we're no more of a democracy than Russia. We have to stand up. We have to hold him accountable. We have to unite. We can have different visions for how we might lead the country. But one thing is certain, you cannot have a president who brazenly wantonly and regularly ignores the law of the land. All right, Bernard uh, Whitman and our Dan Raviv in Washington, thank you both for that.